grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus. My name is Pastor Lauren Bruno, and I'm so glad that you've taken a little bit of time out of your busy and hectic schedule to spend time in God's word today. We'll begin with a reading from Galatians chapter 6. Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. But watch yourselves, or you may also be tempted. Carry one another's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks they are something when they are not, they will deceive themselves. Each one should test their own actions. Then they can take pride in themselves alone, without comparing themselves to someone else. For each should carry their own load. Nevertheless, the one who receives instruction in the word should carry, should share all good things with their instructor. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the spirit from the spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not be weary in doing what is good. For the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially those who belong to the family of believers. I so appreciate Paul's words today, particularly this sentence. And in the old translation, it sounds like this, bear one another's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. You see, a great gift of the scriptures for our time can be found in the way that we're under, invited to understand our relationship to the community at large. Paul calls for us to stop thinking only of ourselves, even in our faith life, to stop thinking of ourselves only being personally in relationship with God, and to start thinking about our neighbor as our relationship with God involves not just us, but our whole community around us. We're invited particularly to think about our neighbor who is in need, our neighbor who is hurting, our neighbor who is vulnerable, and to bear those burdens alongside them. This past week, the Supreme Court laid out a ruling ending 50 years of legalized abortion in the United States. Even within our own congregation, there are a whole range of reactions. Some celebrate this change, others are grieving or fearful. This ambiguity in our community might be surprising. It's assumed in much of our country that the church is always on the side of against abortion. However, as ELCA Lutherans, we adhere to a 1991 social statement, which both grieves for the number of abortions in our country, but also asks the question, asks for something different to be happening. They ask that laws be enacted and enforced justly for the preservation and enhancement of life without unduly encumbering or endangering the lives of women. In short, the social statement defends the moral agency of parents to make this decision together with God, their ministers, their family, and friends, recognizing the broken and hurting worlds in which we find ourselves. We don't belong to a political party on this issue. We believe it's more complicated than it has been presented. We both believe in the precious nature of life and understand the moral complexity of life in a broken world. It's because of this that we trust parents to make this complex decision for themselves with their doctors, family, and in prayer. In the midst of these legal decisions and division over their outcomes, I want you to hear this. In the midst of ambiguity, I want you to hear this. I am here for you. Whether you would like a theological conversation, whether you are afraid, whether you need prayer or comfort or encouragement, I am praying for you and for those who, for whom this decision causes fear and concern. I am also praying that we can have these conversations well. And by that, I mean with the intention of understanding the point of view from which our neighbor comes, seeking to listen rather than to win an argument. Don't forget, 
our task as the church is not to bear judgment. It is not to write out a moral code for our country. It is to bear one another's burdens, especially when our neighbor is afraid or struggling. However you feel about this decision, I encourage you to ask, how can you best love and serve your neighbor? How can you best bear their burdens? We live in a broken and hurting world filled with illness, poverty, stigma, and wrongdoing. And these things place unbelievable burdens on parents and on children after they're born. Our calling is to share those burdens, not to add to them. Our calling is to support every life at every point of life. How can we be a part of that support? These are difficult issues, and we can find strength and clarity in prayer and worship. So let's turn to a hymn that I think you'll know. The words will pop up first in Latin and then in English, and I invite you to sing along with me. Ubi caritas et amor, ubi caritas deus hibiest. Ubi caritas et amor, ubi caritas deus ibi est, where true charity and love abide, God is dwelling there. God is dwelling there, where true charity and love abide. God is dwelling there, God is dwelling there. How can you and I be the loving presence of God for the people around us, every person not just babies, not just those before they are born, but also for people everywhere who are struggling today. Life is short. We haven't much time to gladden the hearts of those with whom we walk this earth. So be swift to love, make haste to be kind, and may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Go in peace, love your neighbor. Thanks be to God.